Sooth, Blackwood Flute. Uh, getting a really good tone out of it. Uh, I think it's because I've been playing my uh, Sweetheart Piccolo, or Delrin uh, Fife, D5 thing, Piccolo. I'm not exactly sure what it's classified as, but tiny flute, very hard to play. Here's my carbony. Carbony. Uh, again, I really like the tone that comes out of that, and it's carbon fiber, so I don't have to worry about it breaking, cracking. Although, ironically, it did crack. <laughs> uh, there was a there was a connection that was a little bit thin, uh, but Rob repaired it for me. And so this is my uh, Gary Summers Delrin. Summers, Delrin Flute. Flute too. 
Um, and it's also Delrin, so I don't have to worry about it cracking. Summers is very, um, very comparable to to what the Lucifer is. Unfortunately, I don't think <clears throat> I don't think Gary Summers makes flutes anymore. Uh, when I tried to look him up, uh, he it didn't seem like I couldn't find an active website or any contact information. So, um, I just I just picked it up off uh, uh, Chiff and Fipple's uh, marketplace a while back. The carbon. <laughs> sound on my carbony is a little bit um, a little bit more delicate I guess a little bit thinner uh, but I like the tone and the texture um, to it so and the fact that it's carbon fiber <laughs>
<clears throat> I'll do that one on the suburbs too. Just so I, I do um, do all my flutes that I have. So, carbon yeah.
really fun and uh, pretty much fits in my backpack. It's a good travel flute. Um, it's a little different from the, the, the low D carbony that I have um, in that it's, it is definitely lighter weight and thinner walled. And so I think he's, uh, Rob is making a low D version that looks a lot like this one that has, it's almost like he took the, you know, the bore and just, you know, added the thickness he needed to, to make it strong. And, and I mean, it's su not super thin, but it's still pretty lightweight, but a lot of power. Uh, whereas this one I think is modeled off like the wall thickness of a, like a Rudol Rose, uh, flute or, or something that's got relatively small holes compared to some of my other flutes. It's a little bit quieter. Um, but it's, it's fairly heavy. It's about the same as a Delrin, uh, a Delrin version. The only difference between this one and the Summers as far as, you know, con over general construction is that the Summers has this extra foot. Um, so the carbony ends up being a little bit more portable. So I do tend to take it places more often. Whereas the Summers is a four, I guess five piece construction is four pieces. If you, if you just count the joints, you're supposed to take apart. And so it ends up being uh, a little bit more, well, I guess technically I could take it apart, <laughs> but I feel like the joints tend to loosen up a little bit and it's a little bit more troublesome. Whereas the, the car, this particular carbony model is just two pieces. So very sturdy and I don't have to mess with anything falling apart. That's not supposed to. So, um, this last one, or this one's a Vincenzo Dumaro. Uh, it'll be the last one, but this is the B flat that I got that I ordered. Uh, it's a student is a student model, and I did mess with the holes a little bit because I wasn't super happy with him. And I don't think he's a I think he's a good maker. I've heard lots of people saying he makes really good flutes. I do have trouble with this one. I feel like moisture kind of tends to build and mess up my ability to get the bottom note. Um, so I don't know if I can warm it up a little bit. Um, Sometimes I get a really good tone out of it, and sometimes it just doesn't, it feels like it doesn't work. And I think partly it's it's because uh, moisture will beat up on the lip, bead on the lip. Maybe I could treat it with like some rinse aid or something like I do with whistles, and it might help um, a little bit. Warming it up. <laughs> I don't really have to do this with whistles, but... Um, Thank mm -hmm. you. 
keep, I lose that bottom. Again, I, I feel like there's either some work I need to do on my embouchure um, or there's a moisture. Maybe I need to just treat the underside of this lip on the windway, on the, uh, <clears throat> the the embouchure cut to to get that low B flat to sound. That's the only thing I don't particularly like about this flute. It's just very finicky. But uh, I did talk to someone who, who owns a Vincenzo di Mauro. Uh, and, and a, an old well B flat, and he said that the de Mauro that he had uh, was actually the stronger, the, had the strongest bottom end of the of any of the flutes, um, any of the B flat flutes that he that he played. So uh, it very easily could just be me and my inability to adjust my embouchure based on the uh, you know to 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 foc enough focus to to get a really strong reedy bottom end. Um, and then just to, just to make it complete, I guess I'll go ahead and, and, uh, this is my, it's getting dark, but this is my Walt Sweet piccolo I've been messing around with, or Fife. I've been, that's, I feel like after I've been messing around with this piccolo, uh, fife thing for a few, a couple of days, I went back to my flutes and I was like, wow, this is so much easier. Um, just, it's like the amount of focus and, and, uh, that this requires. And I, I really think my issue that the second octave of this tends to be flat, especially the top two notes that I noticed the other day. Uh, I really think that's just my inability to, to form and direct the airstream uh, in such a way as to bring it up to pitch. Because if I, I've, I've heard it play just fine uh, a couple times when I, when I just sort of got it uh, positioned just right and I was able to direct the airstream just right. But m so far it's like eight out of 10 times I, I just can't get it to, to work right.
probably the best I've gotten it so far. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you can hear, um, it's a little, a little, uh, it's a little devil, devil of a flute, but I, I feel like I've heard some people using this to help improve their embouchure, um, you know, really give that, that control. Cause if you don't have the control, uh, then this thing sounds terrible and, and it still sounds terrible, but uh, I feel like it's kind of my, my goal is to get to the point where I can consistently play this and and hopefully soften the notes a little bit so that it's like a, a high D whistle but with a little bit more dynamic control um, and, and the ability to have a soft high B uh, if, if I want it, which normally I do. So anyway, I hope that was interesting. I just, I, I uh, what is the thing that's like felt cute might, uh, <laughs> might, might post a picture later or something. I, I was just playing, um, I got my Lesouf out and I was playing that and I was like, man, my embouchure just feels really good. Uh, and I, again, I think it's because of that piccolo fife, uh, sweet, the uh, sweetheart fife. Um, 